Hello, uh, welcome to the last lecture video for uh, Calc 1, uh, section 5.6, and we're going to talk about the substitution rule um, for definite integrals. So we've already talked about how to use the substitution rule for indefinite integrals, so now we're going to talk about how to do it for definite integrals. So if you open up your note sheets to um, page 33, oh, we can go ahead and get started with this. So the idea here before is if you're going to substitute so here is written out the notation for the substitution rule um, for definite integrals. Uh, it looks just like the one for indefinite integrals. One thing we can do is we can, when we substitute for u, we can plug those values into whatever u is. So another way to say this would be find u of b and u of a. And now we never have to go back to that original function, right? One of the things we had to do when we were doing this with uh, d indefinite integrals is substitute back into u. But if you change everything into u for a definite integral, uh, you can find these things a little easier. So for example here, uh, in this first one, we're looking for something we can substitute for u that when we take its derivative, we get the something else that's in the already in the problem. So in this case, a really good thing to look for would be this cosine, right? Because what's the derivative of cosine? Well, the cos derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine. So that's going to be um, sine's already in the problem. So if we let u equal cosine of x, then du is the opposite of sine u d x, I mean sine x dx, sorry, not sine u, sine x dx. Okay, so now we're missing a negative, right, that's in the problem. So this will be 2 pi to 3 pi, 3 cosine squared x times negative 1 times negative sine x dx. Okay. And so now we can do our substitution. Okay. So 3 times negative 1 is just going to be negative 3. And then cosine x squared, well, we substitute in u, so that becomes u squared. And then um, negative sine x dx is just du. And now what we can do is we can replace 2 pi and 3 pi with those values in x, in u. So we can find u of 3 pi which is going to be cosine of 3 pi, and we can find u of 2 pi, which will be cosine of 2 pi. So sine, uh, cosine of 3 pi is negative 1, and cosine of 2 pi is 1. So we can plug those numbers in, so we get 1, negative 1, of this function, okay? Okay, and so then that's a little backwards of what we want, so let's actually do the opposite of that, right? Because here we're going, we want to start with the smaller number. And now we can do that definite integral. So the definite integral here of u squared is u to the third over three. So this will be negative, negative three, u to the third over three, from negative 1 to 1. So then we simplify. So negative negative 3 divided by 3 is just 1. So this is going to be u cubed from negative 1 to 1. So this just equals 1 cubed minus negative 1 cubed, which is 1 minus 1, which is 0. 1 minus negative 1, which is 2. OK? And there's the final answer. And the nice thing about using this format is you never have to go back to whatever the u was. Now, if you wanted to, another way to go about this problem, and feel free to do this, is to ignore this rule all the way at the top completely, um, do your normal derivative as written, and then when you get to the bottom, you don't have to do this part, you just have to substitute back into u. So another option here, instead of doing this part, so if we ignore this, then we can do our derivative and leave it as from 2 pi to 3 pi. And we're still doing negative um, 3u squared du. 
And we can do that der that antiderivative. So that would be um, negative 3u cubed over 3 from 2 pi to 3 pi, which is the 3s cancel out, so that's negative u cubed from 2 pi to 3 pi. Okay, and then we'll come back down to the next line. And now we can substitute back in for u. So that would be negative cosine cubed of x from 2 pi to 3 pi. And now we can plug this va these values in. So this would be negative cosine cubed of 3 pi minus negative cosine cubed of 2 pi. And if you do that, you should get exactly the same answer we got here. Now notice that actually added in more steps by doing that in a lot of ways and made it more complicated. That's why I prefer what's in blue here. So actually using the rule. But you can ignore this rule, just do the integral and then plug in the values just like we did. So do the integrals just like on this page where you have to plug x squared uh, where you have to plug u back in and then plug in the original two values and you'll get exactly the same answers. But let's go ahead and try another one of these. Okay, so for the second one here, um, what we want to do is we want to do the exact same thing we are trying to do. We want to use substitution. So I would let you, if we do x to the fourth, when we do that derivative, we'll get x to the third. So let's do u is x to the fourth plus nine. So then du is 4x cubed dx, okay? And so now we can rewrite this, and we're going to have to add some stuff in. So this will be from negative 1 to 0 of um, 1 over the square root of x to the 4th plus 9 times 1 fourth times 4x cubed dx. And now I can do my substitution. So this will be 1 over 4 root u du, and I need to figure out what are my new endpoints. So I'm going to find, come over here to the side again, and I'm going to do um, u of 0 and u of negative 1. So that's going to be um, 0 to the 4th plus 9, and negative 1 to the 4th plus 9. And so that's going to be 9 to 10. 9 and 10, so this will be 10 to 9. Okay, and so once again here, we're going to have to use this idea. Um, um, I need, so I want to... Once again, these numbers are backwards, so I have to use one of the derivative rules, which says if I want to flip the order, I just take the opposite. Okay, uh, and we'll just leave that negative out there till the end of the problem. Now, so this is one over four root u du, and now we need to do the antiderivative. So you could do the antiderivative by um, using exponents, right? So this will be nine to ten. So this will be one fourth u to the negative one half power du so add one to the exponent so that would be u one fourth times u to the one half over one half and so that's going to be Oh, sorry, except I wrote one thing wrong here, which is I shouldn't have wrote this as an integral, right? Because I did the integral. So I want to write this from 9 to 10 over here. And so this will be negative 1 fourth um, times 2 u to the 1 half from 9 to 10. Okay, and now we can plug those values in. So this will be 1 fourth times 2 is 1 half. So this will be negative 1 half. 10 to the 1 half power minus negative 1 half 9 to the 1 half power. Okay, uh, and so that's going to be negative square root of 10 over 2 plus 3 over 2.
And that's the answer. Okay, and so that's the idea. That's what we're trying to do here. Okay, so let's try one more of these together. Okay, so for this one, the thing that's complicated that uh, we probably can do a derivative of it is the part inside, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to let u equal y cubed plus 6y squared minus 12y plus 9. So then du is 3y squared plus 12y minus 12 dy. Okay. And so that's exactly this piece, except it's missing a factor of 3. Right? So this will be 0 to 1 of y cubed plus 6y squared minus 12y plus 9 to the negative 1 half times 1 third times 3 times y squared plus 4y minus 4 dy. And now we can do the substitution. So this is from 0 to 1 of u to the negative 1 half times 1 third du. Okay. And I need to, except I forgot to, sorry, I forgot to do something here, which is I need to substitute um, in here as well. So I need to find u of 1 and u of 0. So u of 1 is going to be 1 plus 6, which is 7, plus 9, which is uh, 16, minus 12, which is 4. And u of 0 is going to be uh, 9, if you plug in 0. So this would be 9 to 4. Okay, and once again, we're going to need to flip that order around, so that will be the opposite of 4 to 9 of u to the negative 1 hat over 3. Right, du, and now I can do that antiderivative. So that would be u to the one half over three times one half from four to nine. And so that's negative two square root of u over three from four to nine. And so now we can plug those numbers in. So this would be negative 2 root 9 over 3 minus negative 2 root 4 over 3. So that's negative 2 plus 4 thirds. And so that equals negative 2 thirds. So that's the idea that we're looking for here. Okay, so at this point, why don't you guys pause the video and go ahead and try these three problems here. And when you're ready to start again, we'll start the video and we'll go from there. Okay, so now that you've all had a chance to try these problems, let's go ahead and go through them together. So in this first one, uh, we really want to let you be the part under the radical, right? Because when we're this idea, substitution is most useful when you're dealing with uh, composition of functions, similar to like when we use the chain rule. So you're usually going to put a function, uh, the substitution is going to be for a function within a function. Not always, but a lot of the time. So if u is 1 minus r squared, then du is negative 2r dr. Right? And so now we already have the r in the problem, so we need to add in the negative uh, 2, so we'll also have to add in a negative 1 half. So this will become negative 1 to 1, the square root of 1 minus r squared times negative 1 half times negative 2 r dr. Okay? And so now we can do our substitutions. So we're going to go from negative 1 to 1. Uh, no, we're not going to go from negative 1 to 1. Sorry, I'm going to have to plug those values in. Um, but we're going to get the square uh, 1 half sorry, negative one-half times the square root of u du. And now we plug in negative one and one into this function. So one, one minus uh, one squared is zero. One minus negative one squared is zero. Okay, so that's going to cause us an interesting problem that we're going to need to deal with. So this is a good example of one 
where because of the fact that when I plug in negative one and one, I actually get the same result for both in U. I'm not going to be able to use uh, this rule, which is a, uh, the rule we are given. So this is a good example of when we're going to have to go at this a slightly different way just to make sure we get the answer uh, I think we're going to get here. So if we, um, and let me just, because this is slightly out, let's go and graph this one just so we can see what we're dealing with. So this would be x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Yeah, and so this is an interesting one. And actually, we can actually take the fact that this goes from 0 to 0 to give us our answer. Because notice in the picture here, you've got two pieces that are identical, one above and one below the x-axis. And so if you added those positive and negative numbers together, you would actually get 0. Okay, and so since those would cancel out, that's what's going to happen here. Okay, so we can actually tell us right now that this value is zero. Okay. So hopefully that idea made sense. It was because the two areas were gonna cancel each other out. Uh, and if you went in and did it, that's what you would get. You would get, um, they would end up canceling each other out and getting zero. So let's go ahead and look at the next one. So the next one you wanna let u equal t squared plus one. So then du is 2t dt. And so similar here, we need to add the 2 in. So this is going to be the definite integral from 0 to root 7 of t squared plus 1 to the 1 third times 1 half times 2t dt. Okay, so I to add in the 2, I also have to add in a 1 half. So then when we do our substitution, this will be 1 half times u to the one-third du. And now we can plug 0 and root 7 into here to get our new endpoint. So 0 squared plus 1 is 1. Square root of 7 squared is 7 plus 1 is 8. So this is going to go from 1 to 8. So then we do the derivative. So this will be 1 half times u. Add 1 to the exponent. 4 thirds over 4 thirds from 1 to 8. And so then that will be 1 half times 3 over 4 u to the four-thirds from one to eight. So that's three-eighths times u to the th four-thirds from one to eight. And now we can plug those in. So three-eighths times eight to the four-thirds minus three-eighths times one to the four-thirds. And so that's... Uh, 8 to the 4 thirds is 16. So 16 times 3 eighths is 6. Minus 1 to the 4 thirds is 1 minus 3 eighths. And 6 minus 3 eighths is going to be 45 eighths. And if you want to do, you could just plug that in your calculator. I was doing that by hand uh, and in my head, so hopefully it's right. But if you want to do, you could check that. Um, you could plug that in your calculator to check that out. Okay, and then the last one here. Okay, start by substituting. So u is going to be our thing inside this other function. So 1 minus sine of 2t. And then du would be, um, the derivative of that would be what? Uh, derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of sine is cosine. So this would be negative cosine 2t. And then you have to take the derivative of the inside, so times 2. So that's negative 2 cosine 2t dt is what we'd end up getting for that. So we're going to have to add in this negative 2. So we're going to go from 0 to pi over 4 of um, 1 minus sine of 2t to the 3 halves times negative 1 half times negative 2 cosine 2t dt. And now we can do our substitution. So this will be negative one half times one minus sine, uh, sorry, times uh, one minus. I'm doing my substitution. So negative one half times u to the three halves, du, and we plug in zero and pi over four into u. So sine of zero is zero, one minus zero is one. Pi over four times two 
is pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And now we've got a backwards like we had before. So this will be negative uh, 0 to 1 of negative 1 half u to the 3 halves du. Okay, and now you can do the antiderivative. So this will be negative negative 1 half times u to the 5 halves over 5 halves from 0 to 1. So that becomes 1 half times 2 fifths u to the 5 halves from 0 to 1. And so we get 1 fifths u to the 5 halves from 0 to 1. So that's 1 fifth times 1 to the 5 halves minus 1 fifth times 0 to the 5 halves, which is 1 fifth minus 0, which is 1 fifth. Okay, so that's the idea. So the biggest takeaway here is you're really just doing the substitution rule as you normally would. But if you use the rule, you can um, plug in, you can change your endpoints on your interval to match the new function when you've substituted in u, which will save you some steps at the end. Okay. Now the last thing that we're going to talk about in this chapter is the idea of finding areas between two functions. So if f and g are continuous with f of x greater than or equal to g of x throughout a comma b, then the area of the region between the curves y equals f of x and g, y equals g of x for a to b is the integral of f minus g of x from a to b. Okay, so the idea here is if I graph this first, uh, these first two functions, Okay, so let's graph these first two functions. Okay, so we've got, uh, let me get rid of what we were doing before. We've got y equals x squared minus 2x, and then we've got y equals x. Oops, except that I need to put it in the next graph. y equals x. Okay, so then we got two graphs. So notice here, what we're, we've got these two, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find this area, the area between them. So if I, uh, let's try Let's try this. Okay, so let's try putting that in my notes and see how that looks. Okay, that's pretty big. Let's put it over here. Okay, uh, what we're looking for, and I won't probably include the pictures for the other ones, but for this one, what we're, I thought I'd put the first one. What we're looking for is we're looking for this area, the area in between the two graphs, okay? So there are two questions asked. Which graph is on the bottom and which graph is on the top, okay? And then what is the interval where we're creating a shape? So in this case, we're going from 0 to 3, so that's going to be my interval. And if you notice, it's the y equals x squared minus 2x that's on the bottom. So, and then the x is the graph on the top. So, when I go to do this interval, my area is going to equal from 0 to 3, right? That's the interval. These go from 0 on the x to 3 on the x. And then I'm going to subtract the functions, the top one minus the bottom one. So, I'm going to take x minus x squared minus 2x dx. And now we're going to do that integral. So, this would be a equals the integral from 0 to 3 of x minus x squared minus 2x dx, and then combine like terms. So it's the area from 0 to 3 of uh, the opposite of x squared minus x dx. Okay. 
Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to find that derivative. Okay, I mean that antiderivative. We're going to do this integral. So what we want to do is we want to just do the, this is a straightforward one. We don't need to use the substitution rule or anything. The uh, antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. The antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. And then we want to do that from 0 to 3. Okay, so this will be 3 cubed over 3 minus 3 squared over 3. minus the opposite of 0 cubed over 3 minus 0 squared over 3. Oh, sorry. I distributed wrong. I knew I screwed something up here. when I, I forgot to distribute this negative. So these should be um, plus 3x. So sorry, we're going to have to go back a little bit here. Okay, so um, I, for, I d forgot to distribute the negative. So negative, negative 2x is positive 2x, x plus 2x is 3x. So this would be the area. And actually, let's go ahead and rewrite this so that the positive term comes first. So this will be 3x minus x squared. Okay, now we do the antiderivative. So this will be 3x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 from 0 to 3, and now we can plug the numbers in. So this will be 3 times 3 squared over 2 minus 3 cubed over 3 minus 0, uh, 3 times 0 squared over 2 minus 0 cubed over 3. Okay, and now if you wanted to, you could just plug that in the calculator and see what we get for an answer. The second part's going to be 0, so I'm not going to worry about that. But the first part would be 3 times 3 squared divided by 2 minus 3 cubed divided by 3. And so the answer is 4 and a half or nine halves. So the area between these two would be nine halves. Okay, so that's the idea. So that's what we're looking at uh, here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try uh, another one of these together. Okay, so first thing you probably want to do is graph it. Graph both of these. Okay, so if we go to the graphing calculator again, and I graph x cubed minus y equals 0, and we graph 3x squared minus y equals 4. Okay, 
We get those values, we get this graph. Uh, and so what we care about is we care about which graph is on top and where do they meet. So in this case, our interval is from negative one to two. And the graph that's on top is this blue one, is the first one. Okay, so our interval here is going to be from negative one to two. Okay, and we're going to need to solve both of these for y in order to graph them. So if we did that, we'd get y equals x cubed, and we'd get y equals uh, 3x squared minus 4. And so now we can use the formula. So we do the graph that's on top, which in this case, we're going to go from negative 1 to 2, because that's our region, and we do the graph that's on top, which is x cubed minus the graph on the bottom, dx. So this will be the area from negative 1 to 2 of the uh, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4 dx, and now we can do the antiderivatives. So the antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over 4. The antiderivative of 3x squared um, is x cubed, and the antiderivative of 4 is 4x from negative 1 to 2, and now we just plug those numbers in. So this would be the area equals... 2 to the 4th over 2 minus 2 cubed plus 4 times 2 minus negative 1 to the 4th over 2 minus negative 1 cubed plus 4 times negative 1. And the easiest way, like any of these, to do that is to just plug that in our calculator. Okay, so that's going to be 2 to the 4th divided by 4 minus 2 cubed plus 4 times 2 minus negative 1 to the 4th. divided by 4, which I think I might have done one thing wrong in our notes, but I'll fix it when we come back, minus negative 1 to the third plus 4 times negative 1. And so we get uh, 6.75, which I should have probably done in the, or 27 fourths. So 27 fourths. And I wrote something wrong here, which is these should be fours on the bottom of those two fractions. They're right over here, correct over in there, but wrong over here. So the area is 27 fourths. Okay, so that's all we're trying to do here. Okay, and so let's do... Uh, one more of these together. So then the next one, so I'm going to go ahead and graph it. So let's get rid of that. So graph these two equations. So y equals sine, oops, sine of pi x divided by 2 and y equals x. Okay. Now, if we zoom in on this one, something interesting happens. Okay. And that's that the graphs cross more than once. So there's part of the graph where from negative 1 to 0 where the uh, sine graph is below y equals x, and then the other part of the graph, the sine graph, is above so to do this one, we're going to need to break this up into two pieces. The area is going to be the sum of two different integrals. So we're going to have from negative 1 to 0, we're going to have x minus sine of pi over 2x. And then from 0 to 1, we're going to have sine of pi over 2x.
minus x dx. Sorry, I forgot the dx over here too. So whenever, anytime these things cross we're, and we get multiple regions, we're going to have to add them together and do them separately. So that's why we're going to get two different ones here. Uh, and I'm probably not going to have enough room to do this, but we'll do as much of it as we can here. So um, go ahead and do these antiderivatives, right? So the antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. The antiderivative anti sine of So the antiderivative sign is negative 1 over what's k, so negative 1 over pi over 2 cosine of pi over 2x from negative 1 to 0. And then the other one is going to be, so then plus, same derivatives, so negative 1 1 over pi over 2 sine uh, cosine cosine of pi over 2 x minus x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. And then we need to just plug in these values, right? So the area, and hopefully I have enough room to write this all the way out, but it's going to be 0 squared plus 2 pi cosine of 0, pi over 2 times 0. So minus negative 1 squared over 2 plus 2 over pi cosine of pi over 2 times negative 1 and then plus negative 2 over pi cosine of pi over 2 times 1 minus 1 squared over 2 minus negative 2 pi cosine of pi over 2 times 0 minus 0 squared over 2. Okay, and let's see if we can simplify this. So here we go. So this is 0. The first term is 0. The second term is cosine of 0, which is 1 times 2 pi. So we've got 2 over pi. Then over here we've got uh, negative 1 half. And cosine of negative pi over 2 is 0. So that part's 0. Then over here we've got cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So that part, first part, 0. 1 squared is 1, so minus 1 half. And then uh, cosine of 0 is 1. So this would be negative 2 over pi, so that's going to be plus 2 over pi because of the minus sign out in front. And then that's a 0. So this is what we get. So add those together, and you get 4 over pi minus 1. Okay, so that one's a little complicated because of the trig values and all the pieces, but the key is when you break it up into pieces, you have to find... Um... So now that we've done a few of these, why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video and try these two, and then we'll go through them together. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to try these, uh, let's go ahead and go through them together. So the first one... All right, we've got y equals 2x 
minus x squared. And then we've got y equals negative 3. Okay. And don't really know why I'm not able to move this around like I'd want to. Okay, but anyway, uh, we get the points we want, which are at negative 1, negative 3, and 3, negative 3. So we're going from negative 1 to 3, and the parabola is above the um, line there. So we're going from negative 1 to 3, and we're going to take the parabola 2x minus x squared and subtract the other function, negative 3. So that'll give me from negative 1 to 3 of 2x minus x squared plus 3 dx, and now I can do these derivatives. So that's the antiderivative 2x is x squared, the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3, and the antiderivative of 3 is 3x from negative 1 to 3, and then just plug those values in. So 3 squared minus 3 cubed over 3 plus 3 times 3 minus negative 1 squared minus negative 1 cubed over 3 plus 3 times negative 1. Okay, so that's 9 minus 9 plus 9 minus 1 minus 1 third plus 3. So that's 9 minus 9 is 0 plus 9 is 9 minus 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11, minus a third is 32 thirds. Okay, that's what you should get for that one. And then we can try the second one here. So if we start by graphing that, so graph these two equations, we've got y equals 2x minus x squared, and y equals x squared plus 4. Uh, except that I put in, sorry, I put in the wrong equation. I put in the equation for the previous problem. So 7 minus 2x squared. Okay, so there we go. So here we've got our two uh, intersections which happen at negative 1 and 1 and notice that the um, first equation the 7 minus 2x squared is the one that's on top okay so we're gonna go for this one we're gonna go from negative 1 to 1 and we're gonna do 7 minus 2x squared minus x squared plus 4 dx and so that's negative 1 to 1 of 7 minus 2x squared minus x squared minus 4 so that's from negative 1 to 1 of 7, uh, combined like term, 7 minus 4 is 3, negative 2x squared minus x squared is 3x squared, dx. And then we can do the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of 3x, 3, 3 is 3x. Antiderivative of 3x squared is x cubed from negative 1 to 1. So this is 3 times 1 minus 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 minus negative 1 cubed. So that's 3 minus 1 plus 3 minus 1. So that's 4. Okay, is the area that. Now, all of these examples have involved functions. So that means that we've been able, we've been able to solve them easily for a uh, y um, when we plug them into the function. However, what if we had ones that you can't, where we have things like y squared, which is not a function? Well, in those cases, what we're going to want to do instead is kind of do this the reverse. Okay? So that means that if I graph these, first of all, so let's graph our functions here. So if I'm doing this first one, I graph it. What I want to do is I I'll put in my equation. So x minus y squared equals 0. And 
x plus 2 y squared equals 3. Okay, so if we graph those and we zoom in a little on them, they look like this, although I think I must have put in one of them wrong. Yeah, I put in 6 for some reason instead of 3. Okay, so now um, if we zoom in this and... I don't know why my graph is not working the way it's supposed to, but anyway, um, that'll work. The idea here is, let's go ahead and try and screenshot that and put it in my notes. Okay, so now if we insert that picture into our notes, we'll be able to look at it. Okay, so notice here, we're still trying to find the error between these curves, except in this case, I'm not really above or below either one of those in terms of x. So what we might want to think about is what if we um, instead took this graph and kind of rotate it. So thought of it uh, sitting vertically. So let's go um, kind of go this way with the graph. So now we're going from a y value of negative 1 to 1. For the y values and if we look at the graph this way then this graph is the one that's on top because it's far to the right and this one's on the bottom the one that's farther to the left so we could solve these both for x so this one would be x equals y squared and this one would be x equals 3 minus 2 y squared okay um, and so what we want to do is we want to do the same idea we're going to go from negative 1 to 1 and we're going to subtract the x values here the same idea so in this case I'm gonna take th the one on the right 3 minus 2 y squared minus the one on the left minus y squared dy okay same idea except we're doing it in terms of y so this would be negative 1 to 1 of 3 minus 3 y squared dy so that's negative 1 to 1 of 3 y minus y cubed whoops sorry I did the, the integral, so now I want to transfer to this notation. And then we could plug it in. So this is 3 times 1 minus 1 cubed minus 3 times 1, my, uh, negative 1 times negative 1 cubed. And so that's 3 minus 1 plus 3 minus 1, which is 4.